Oklahoma's forest industry is primarily located in 18 eastern counties. And this week, reporter Steve Shaw and photographer Aaron Bird traveled to the city of Idabel in McCurtain County to report on an industry that, like the trees themselves, continues to mature. Steve? Rich, the logging and timber industry is a huge economic driver on the east side of the state, and they're getting much better at it. The Heron Family Tree Farm in McCurtain County stretches across 30,000 acres and 48 square miles of timber on the western edge of what's known nationally as America's Pine Belt. And it's just a few miles from the Arkansas and Texas borders. We're the biggest family forest landowner in the state of Oklahoma. It's been in Pete Heron's family for four generations. Oklahoma's timber industry employs more than 19,000 workers and brings in an economic impact of at least $5.3 billion to the state each year. Oklahoma is about 12% timberland. This past Tuesday, we caught up with Heron's crews that are deep into what's known as the first thinning, which takes place when a tree is 16 years old. They use what are known as cutting machines and loader delimmers and skidders to cut down, move, and load smaller or deformed trees into giant trucks. Trucks that begin showing up for work each day as early as 2 a.m. Yeah, they don't need, they just need their headlights. And these trees right here that you're seeing will go to feed the paper mill or to the wood specialty products meal like the Huber meal you passed in Broken Bow. So what you're seeing right here is future Starbucks cups and future Amazon boxes and another meal over in Arkansas, a paper mill would make the white copy paper we're all familiar with. So that's the kind of end product that these raw materials go to. What's known as the final harvest comes when a tree is 30 to 32 years old. We harvest um, about 150,000 tons every year and that's split between um, 75% final harvest and 25% um, thinning harvest like this. It used to take a month to cut 40 acres final harvest, now it's taken a week. So these machines are bigger, they're faster, they load more wood, the mill uses more wood, the consumption of the mill has gone up dramatically, they've made improvements all the time, so that has helped. You have to grow enough wood and be able to harvest enough wood to be able to feed the mill, that's what it's all about you won't see chainsaws out here. The thing about a chainsaw is number one, it takes a lot of labor intensive, it's hard to handle. Number two, it puts insurance rates through the roof. Heron says the move away from chainsaws began five decades ago. A little later, something else changed that has revolutionized this game. It's the seeds. So in the late 70s and early 80s, they moved from a process of natural regeneration, which is the way God did it in Mother Nature, just let the seed fall and manage it from there, to a process of planting genetically improved plantations, just like you see with corn, with soybeans, or with any other agricultural crop like that. Cotton. Cotton, exactly. 50 years ago, it took 50 years to grow and harvest a tree. Now, because of scientific and genetic advances, takes about 30. Callista Stevens directs the Forest Heritage Center in nearby Beaver's Bend State Park. We have a lot of research in the state of Oklahoma into uh, genetics for trees. We have our seed orchard down in Idabel at the Oklahoma State University Research Station. Uh, and Oklahoma Forestry Services um, manager supervises the harvest of the very best seeds from the very best trees. Quick history lesson. Around the time Oklahoma was granted statehood in 1907, massive forests were pillaged for the trees. Three decades later, FDR's Green New Deal established what was known as the Civilian Conservation Corps. They started the process of replanting all of those trees. Yeah, those young men, uh, they made $25 a day. They sent about 20 back to their families and kept about five to live on. But um, here we are in this beautiful park that they're responsible for. 
So it's, it's amazing to be a part of this piece of history. Sustainable forestry means that we can keep, keep this industry going forever. It means that we treat this natural resource with care, we replant, we put back what we take away. We think it's, it's great to use wood products because we replant more trees than we take away. And so that resource is gonna be around forever. This part of McCurtain County has seen millions of new visitors in recent years. Many others just moved to the area. Pete Heron says too many of them with the wrong impressions. So now more than ever, because of the increase in uneducated visitors, our mission is to promote the sustainability message of forests in Oklahoma and forests across the South because we are doing the right thing. We're out here planting and harvesting and regrowing most of all. So that way everyone continue, can continue to enjoy the scenic beauty of all these trees and not to mention the, raw, the products that they produce. We're providing, storing carbon, we're the lungs of the planet, so you're not going to find a better green solution that's sustainably grown out there on the market today. By the way, Georgia has the most timberland in the country, followed by Florida and Mississippi.